Welcome back to a series where we find out just how beginner-friendly alternative operating systems can be so that one day everyone might enjoy being free from the clutches of Windows. Someone else who shares this passion for giving people a simple, ad-free and fun experience of computers is Glorious Eggroll. If you watched the troubleshooting on Linux video on this channel, then you might recognize that name as Glorious Eggroll was mentioned in that video. That's because one of the steps recommended in that video was to use Glorious Eggroll's version of Proton as opposed to Valve's default version. But you might also remember that we made mention of Glorious Eggroll having his very own Linux distribution. And that is exactly what we're going to look at today. As usual, the first part of this video will be the very fast version of getting your USB set up and ready to go so that you can install or even just try any Linux distribution you'd like. But if you've seen any of the other videos on this channel about alternative operating systems, or you already have a USB ready to go, then just sit tight for a minute. And if you're new here and this next section is way too fast for you, we are trying to be as inclusive for beginners as possible, then there is a longer version in this video. But for the sake of having everything we need in the one video, we're going to do the fast version now. So here we go. Grab a USB, back up all the data on that USB. Download Balina Etcher, download Ventoy. Open Balina Etcher, select Ventoy in the first section. Select your USB in the second section. Double check that you've backed up all the data on your USB because once you hit flash, it's gone. Once again, the slow version looks like this and you can find that on this channel. So if you need to, you can watch that and then meet us back at this section here. But whether you could keep up with the fast version, you already had a USB before, or you just wanna sit back and relax and see what all the fuss is about getting started with alternative operating systems, we're about to dive in. So let's get started. Open your internet browser and search for Nobara Linux. This is what the link looks like. You'll notice that the middle section recommends Ventoy, but we're already one step ahead. Over on the right, you'll see a link to download Nobara. Don't worry about that as we're already on the download page. Scroll down until you see these five download buttons. The difference between these versions is explained above, but if you just wanna to cut to the chase, we'll download the first version, which is a custom version of KDE. There's also a GNOME version available, but we'll be picking the KDE version here. Once we click download, we'll get a disclaimer. It's important to reiterate that this isn't a company or corporation. This is one person. Once you click, I agree, your download will start. Mine is going to the desktop to make it easier for you to follow along, but yours is likely going to your downloads folder. Plug in your Ventoy USB and either drag and drop or copy and paste Nobara over to your Ventoy USB. Then, once it's done transferring, safely eject. For the PC you intend to install Nobara on, it's important that you back up all of your data now before we continue, no matter what method of installation you're planning on. Especially if you intend to follow this video step by step, because erase disk is the option we'll be selecting later. So back up your data. Most people learn why they need backups after they've lost all of their data. Don't be that person. With your data backed up, turn off your PC. Plug in your Ventoy USB and find the F2 and delete keys on your keyboard. Turn on your PC and immediately press either the F2 or delete keys repeatedly until you enter the BIOS. If you didn't get into the BIOS, turn off your PC and try the opposite of whichever key you tried first. Once we're in the BIOS, we're looking for either a boot menu or a boot override in our motherboard. This Gigabyte motherboard has the boot override under the save and exit section, while this Aces motherboard has a boot menu over here. Find your USB in the menu, but keep in mind the name will be different to whatever it was in the operating system. Once you find it, press enter. Then find Nobara in the Ventoy menu and press enter again. Normal mode is fine, so press enter. Feel free to test your media if you'd like, that is your Ventoy USB. Otherwise, you can press up and enter to skip testing. Those of you who have seen the Bazite and Fedora videos will be familiar with this screen. That's because Nobara is based off of Fedora. 
You might also notice that the not a taskbar appeared at the bottom of the screen. That's because this is also the try before you buy or live USB section of Nobara. So you could close the installer and test the look and feel of Nobara before installing properly. But a proper install is what we're here to do. Select your language, location, and keyboard layout. Once again, Linux does what Windows can't, a local account and automatic login. The last box is similar to the one we had to untick in Tuxedo to use whatever password we'd like, but it's off by default here. As mentioned earlier, erase disk is always the easiest method, but it's also the most permanent. Partitioning is not exactly beginner friendly. Then a final review and we're installing. While you're waiting, you can click new game in the bottom left, which is a nice little touch. And while you're waiting for that, let's talk about Glorious Eggroll for a moment. Across multiple interviews, Glorious Eggroll has stated that one of the reasons he created Nobara was for his father, who, after a weekend of troubleshooting his Windows PC, he decided that the best thing was to move him over to Linux, which led to him maintaining his own distribution. This is another thing that resonates with the purpose of this channel. Alternative operating systems shouldn't be gatekept by only the most knowledgeable people who know every single command in the terminal. No one should have to suffer through the trials and tribulations of Windows, no matter what their skill level is. So, no borrow was born. Now that we're installed, we'll restart our PC. Once we're on the desktop, there's a welcome message here. But before you dismiss it, it's highly recommended that you take a look at what's inside. This is genuinely a great first experience for a beginner as it outlines the next steps for using Nobara. Getting to this part is also entirely possible while installing offline, as tested off camera. Naturally, we'd need to be online to get updates and download apps, but we'll look at how to get a completely offline PC working in a future video. For now, as usual, we're going to update our operating system. This can be done by either clicking on the relevant section under first steps, or by clicking on the second icon from the left in the not a taskbar. It looks like this is a similar design to Linux Mint, where the updates for the operating system are separated from the updates for applications. You might notice a lot of text flying up on the screen, which seems like a terminal, but we don't have to interact with any of this so we're still passing the no terminal challenge. In fact, sometimes there are explanations as to what's going on in said terminal, which is another really nice detail. Once all those updates are done, and before we restart for good measure, there's even a repair button on this app. Talk about quality of life features. So let's restart, and when we get back into our desktop, the startup app will have already disappeared. That's because, during the process, the show on startup box actually unticked itself when we interacted with the box. Another quality of life feature which Glorious Eggroll has thought of, but we're going to reopen the welcome menu. That's because there's plenty more helpful things in this startup menu that could help you out. For video editors who use DaVinci Resolve, click on optional steps. For gaming, check out recommended additions. But as with all videos in this series, we have one goal in mind, get our Steam games up and running. At this time, Glorious Eggroll is one step ahead of us. Steam comes pre-installed with Nubara, so all we have to do is click the Not A Start menu and hover over games to find Steam. For those of you who have seen the video to get the EA app up and running without Steam, you'll also notice Lutris is pre-installed. But let's focus on Steam. Once you've clicked on it, the process is almost identical to that of Windows. Sign in, click install on a game, and wait. The only difference here is that we'll be downloading Proton in the back as well, which is automatic and you don't have to do anything. At least, that's how it goes for just about every other game. But when picking a game to benchmark for this video, something came up that would have been excellent to put in the troubleshooting on Linux video. So let's cover it here, and if there's ever a troubleshooting on Linux part two, it'll make it into that video as well. Today's benchmark, as you can probably see, is the 2013 reboot of Tomb Raider. If you download it and click play, nothing happens. This is likely because Steam is downloading the Linux version, 
That's right, there's actually a Linux version for this game, which has likely been abandoned. So in this situation, we want to download the Windows version of the game and we want to run it through Proton. And how do we do that? It's super easy. Right click on the game, then select Properties. Click on Compatibility and select Force the use of a specific Steam Play compatibility tool. Then click the drop down menu and select whichever version of Proton you'd like. Proton Experimental is normally the go-to in these situations. Now when you click play, you'll get Proton downloading along with a patch that's likely some sort of conversion to the Windows version. Then the game should boot up. Shadow of the Tomb Raider also has a Linux version and that version actually works, but the preferred way to play is still using the Windows version using Proton because that's likely the version that the developer has paid some attention to. This is also the same way that we'd switch to Glorious Egg Roll's version of Proton. And speaking of which, if this was a game that needed a version of Glorious Egg Roll's Proton, you can see Proton Plus pre-installed in the menu next to Steam and Lutris. For those of you who love emulation, getting DuckStation, PCSX2, RPCS3, and Zemu installed can be done from Flatpost. Nobara's own software center or Discover app. This is also the place to go for any apps that weren't listed in the welcome menu. For example, if you didn't want to use Brave as your default browser, you could change that here. So that's Nobara. Why there are a lot of similarities to Fedora and Mint, the closest similarity to Nobara is actually Bazite. It comes with a lot of things out of the box to help you get up and running with gaming as quickly as possible, including Steam being pre-installed. It's very hard to overstate just how much Glorious Eggroll has done for the Linux community. Between his own version of Proton and his very own Linux distribution, he has helped a lot of people getting their games up and running and also leaving Windows entirely. So I think it's safe to say that can Nobara replace Windows? For a lot of people, it already has. So if you want to replace Windows, then this is a great place to start.